Now, if you've been living under a rock these past couple of weeks, then you probably don't know or just don't care about the new wave of allegations that have surfaced on Twitter going against some of the biggest Minecraft creators within the community. Content creators like Wilbur Soot, George Not Found, and Puns have all came to light within just these past few weeks. Now, Minecraft has always had a reputation of harboring terrible and abusive creators who use their influence to take advantage of their young fan base. But it seemed as though those times were behind the community until one tweet which urged people to tune into their live stream would subsequently lead other alleged victims to come out with their own stories and experiences with other Minecraft creators within the space. This created a new wave of allegations within the community, which people thought already weeded out the worst creators. The first creator who was exposed for his disturbing behavior was a Minecraft content creator by the name of Wilbur Sud. These allegations came out on February 21st when Wilbur's ex-girlfriend, Shubble or Shelby, posted a tweet that said, talking about something more serious. She'd tell her fans or whoever stumbled across the tweet that she was going live on Twitch to speak about some serious allegations and to finally speak about something that was haunting her. During this live stream, she'd speak about her ex-boyfriend who'd bite her constantly and how it got to a point where they needed to have a safe word. But that safe word ended up being used against her and he'd tell her multiple times that she needed to increase her pain tolerance or that he wasn't biting her that hard. Or when he was biting her, if she said the safe word, then he'd bite down even harder for a split second before releasing his bite. He'd also poke her bruises that he left from his constant biting and then would bite her legs to hide the bruises he was giving her. He'd gaslight her and downplay how he made her feel or the pain that she was in because of him. She'd also mention how she'd have to constantly clean up after him and how he lived like a slob. He had this habit of biting, which is so weird to me now, but he said that he had had this habit since he was a kid and even his mom said that that was true. And he said it was just affectionate and that that might have been I mean I think that that might have been true maybe at the start but I also feel that I have good reason to believe that every part of it was a lie but that's just my personal opinion um and I had no problem with just biting that isn't even the most uncommon thing um but he did mention something early that I should have taken as a red flag um and he wanted to make sure that I was okay with him biting me because he didn't want me to come back later and say that he abused me, which I thought was really weird considering he had never hurt me before. And so why would I call it abuse? And why was he thinking about that? And I thought he was being sweet, checking on me to make sure that I was still comfortable. Um, but I, of course I was because he hadn't hurt me. And why would I think he ever would? Um, and then he did for the first time by accident. Uh, and I don't specifically remember the actual first time that he bit me too hard by accident because I didn't think that it would be significant. Um, I thought that it would only happen once. And he started biting me more and more over a period of time, sort of throughout the whole relationship. And accidents of him biting too hard and really hurting me happened more and more frequently. Um, but he always seemed genuinely sorry and he decided that he didn't want to keep accidentally hurting me. Um, so we were going to use a safe word um, so he could learn where my limit was, where my pain tolerance ended. Uh, and saying that out loud now doesn't sound like that's not very sound logic. Um, but at the time, I thought he cared about not hurting me. But in reality, it's like, why are you biting so hard? And why do you have to bite so hard? And it shouldn't be that hard of a problem to stop. Um, that shouldn't be that hard. And he disguised it as this really quirky part of our relationship and was so comfortable sharing it with his friends to the point that he would do it in front of them. He thought it was this really funny story to tell and a good bit to take my arm and bite me in front of everybody because... I would go home later and I'd tell him how uncomfortable I was, how much I didn't like being hurt all the time. And I needed him to really stop biting so hard. I didn't like it and I tried telling him over and over again because he wasn't actually trying at all to not hurt me. Um, but he said he would try at first. And then he started saying things like, it was my pain tolerance that was too low or I'm exaggerating how much it actually hurts. He's not even biting that hard. I'm, I'm being dramatic. Um, 
But his biting escalated to a point where I was covered in bruises all over my arms and they hurt and he would poke at them for fun. And he even felt so comfortable showing off my bruises that he had caused to our friends because he would bite me so hard by accident. By accident, he would even joke that it looked like he abused me. Um, and eventually he did acknowledge how bad it looked that I was covered in bruises all the time. So he stopped um, biting my arms as often and he started biting my legs instead. Um, and it was in the last couple of months of the relationship that every time he bit me, it was until I needed to use this safe word. Um, it had become his benchmark for when to stop. Only once I was definitely hurt, um, which meant I was being hurt every single day, um, multiple times a day uh, for all of the days that we spent together in person. And when I asked him to stop again, this time he said, this is who he is. He isn't going to change. Those were his words. During the live stream, Shelby never mentioned the mystery man that had abused her by name. But the internet investigators did their own investigation into who they thought it was. Eventually, the internet put two and two together and figured out that Shelby was talking about Wilbur. Because Wilbur was exposed as being the one who abused Shelby, Wilbur would post an apology. But it was more like a statement and less like an apology, and he posted it to his Twitter account on the 27th of February. So almost a week after the initial allegations. This statement read, In the past week, a series of allegations have been made over my conduct from an ex-girlfriend. I want to emphasize that although I feel it fair to offer my perspective, this person's feelings are completely valid. I have taken my time sharing this statement as I wanted to process and respond respectfully and with the hope to gain a deeper understanding for the situation. During our relationship's final months, I regrettably became slobbish, disrespectful, and selfish. These actions caused a lot of pain to my ex-girlfriend, and I have since sought therapy to address these behaviors, making significant lifestyle changes to rectify my past actions. I have come to realize how much my past behavior hurt this person, but I truly, compassionately believe I have made great strides from the person I once was and hope I can continue to grow and improve on this trajectory. The next slide of this statement read, The allegation of abuse, particularly in the form of biting, deeply shocked me. Throughout our relationship, I understood from our new numerous conversations and text message exchanges on the subject that this behavior was consensual, playful, and reciprocally enjoyed. I truly believe those personal message exchanges reflect mutual affection and understanding. Out of respect for her, I chose not to publish them, and I emphasize my perspective is not shared to diminish or invalidate anyone's feelings. Instead, I share it in the hope that I can offer a genuine, fair, and relevant insight into my understanding of the situation. While I may perceive our interactions differently, I recognize that this person has processed and expressed feelings of hurt. I want to extend my sincerest apologies for any pain that I caused. I am truly committed to understanding and addressing her concerns going forward. I hope my perspective sheds light on the situation without detracting from this message. I am dedicated to earning and maintaining the trust of those around me and hope I continue to be held to these high standards I wish to attain and maintain. Now, this apology was heavily criticized by the internet. People took issue with Wilbur deliberately avoiding saying Shelby's name throughout that apology. He'd also take accountability for being a slob but not for abusing Shelby, passing it off as being playful and consensual. Another issue that I had with the statement is that if he truly had evidence that the biting was consensual and that evidence was in text messages, why wouldn't he at least show some proof that Shelby was blowing the allegations out of proportion? This was a bad look and he tries to frame it as if he was trying to respect Shelby, but I just think he never had the text messages in the first place. Because in this case, you can add context with text messages without taking away from Shelby's original claims. He could have also apologized for his behavior instead of giving himself a complex of being a changed man and on the right path. This statement was self-centered and foolish, with even Dream out of all people posting his statement under Wilbur's tweet. Without reading Dream's full statement, he'd say, she said she withdrew consent using a safe word and that you frequently would intentionally bite down harder afterward to the point that she would scream. Even isolated from everything else, that is clearly abuse. 
While reading this, I was waiting to see you talk about that issue, to say anything at all, only to finish reading and find out that you didn't acknowledge it once. I really don't understand how you thought this was accountability or an apology, or even an informative statement. This did serve as confirmation she was talking about you, which I'm glad to have. Wilbur, you take accountability for being slobbish, disrespectful, and selfish, and it seems those are the things you acknowledge as past problems, while overshadowing the physically abusive actions and claiming to be completely reformed now. You seem to truly think you did nothing abusive, and this statement is built on that foundation. You are being dishonest with yourself, or dishonest with us, or both. You describe these acts as consensual, without refuting her complete revocation of consent through your agreed upon safe word. A word set with the purpose of explicitly ending consent. She trusted you with this safe word as a boundary. You shattered that trust. Shelby was afraid to say your name due to your dedicated audience, and this wasn't acknowledged either. As someone who at times shared an audience with you, this is severely disappointing. She had reason to be afraid to say your name, but you shouldn't have been afraid to say hers. Dream's statements shine a light on the allegations and gave the allegations more coverage for people who may not have known what exactly was happening with Wilbur's statement. After this, Wilbur would ban all of his Twitch mods, even the mod that shows links for women's aid. After banning his mods and then allegedly creating a burner account to moderate his own Twitch chat, people started to put the reference together of the burner account. The account's name was Jebediah Springfield 12345, who in The Simpsons has a wife named Shelbyville. People alleged that it was Wilbur who was running this burner account so that his Twitch account wasn't banned for not being moderated, especially because of how new the account was and how it had access to become a mod in the first place, and how Wilbur had an obsession with The Simpsons. Funny enough, Jebediah Springfield from The Simpsons turned out to be a terrible person, so if this is Wilbur, then it's pretty telling of the person he actually is. But again, this hasn't been confirmed, and people on Reddit only speculate if it's him or not. With some Redditors expressing their own opinions on the situation, like this comment that read, It's so fascinating to watch an abusive slash self-absorbed personality melt down in real time like this. It reads like he knows that he can't win over the public opinion anymore, so he's going to do everything he can to hurt as many people as possible so long as he has a shred of influence left. This alt account took over his Twitch chat on March 1st, the same day that Shelby came out with her own statement about Wilbur's apology. Now, Shelby did take a couple of days to respond to Wilbur's statement, but later posted a statement of her own onto her Twitter account saying, I'd like to address the apology. Quite frankly, I've never seen an apology so self-centered. It seems to purposely misconstrue the issue I very clearly laid out. My issue was not with being bit, it was with being hurt. And to vaguely apologize for any hurt while knowing we needed a safe word because because I was being hurt so often by accident and I continue to be hurt daily is incredibly disrespectful, but not more disrespectful than not even saying my name. I believe I am referred to as his ex-girlfriend. So if you don't know who he's talking about, you might not find out what he did. This is not how you take accountability. Not only are there no DMs whatsoever where it is expressed that I enjoy being hurt by my partner, to imply there was consent in text over an issue that entirely happened in person, where every conversation about it happened in person is ridiculous. He knows how often I asked him to stop hurting me, that I didn't like it and that I didn't like being covered in bruises all the time, entirely why he switched to biting my legs. So no one would think I looked abused, but he continued to hurt me. He either didn't take my pleas for it to stop seriously, or he didn't hear them at all. Even after Shubble's new statement came out, Wilbur still didn't respond. And because he didn't respond to the second statement, and also didn't try to defend himself with the first statement, the online world already made their decision. With two statements from Shelby and a public denouncing by Dream, Wilbur would lose 240,000 subscribers within just a few weeks, and the worst was yet to come. On March 8th, 2024, another ex-girlfriend of Wilbur's would come forward with her own experience with Wilbur. That girlfriend's name was Alice, and she'd post a statement about Wilbur. Now, for the need of context, I'm going to read the full post, and I'll also leave a link to it in the description below. But she'd write, I felt like I couldn't talk about this sooner because I was scared of his public influence and the potential backlash from fans. But now after hearing Shelby's story, seeing the support she's been shown, and admiring her bravery, I finally feel safe to break my silence on our relationship. Back in 2019, at the beginning of the relationship, I was immediately shown a lot of affection, very reminiscent of love bombing. One of his close friends at the time warned me in confidence to be careful, as if they had seen people get hurt in the past. But I believed he was good inside. 
After a month, the honeymoon period was over, and it was like I was dating a completely different person. I was told to keep our relationship a secret, but was framed in a way that implied that it was for my safety, as if it was in the best interest to keep this a secret despite my own feelings. I believe that he enjoyed having control in the relationship. I would have to hide as he streamed, and sit silently in the corner of his room waiting for him to go offline. He would say condescending things to me about my interests and the type of content I created as if he just didn't take it or me seriously, and would only be enthusiastic about his future plans with music and desire for fame. I never felt like he was encouraging towards me or any of my goals, and in the last few months, he made me feel extremely unlovable and unwanted. I had suffered with self-harm tendencies in 2019. He ignored the marks on my body and only took interest in retelling his own life struggles. I also experienced the biting habit, which has already been elaborated on by Shelby. After a while, I noticed that it was always me putting the effort into the relationship. So I decided one day to not be the one to message first, just to see what would happen. And he never spoke to me again. So the relationship dissolved. Skipping ahead to 2021, we had spoken briefly over an Instagram DM about the relationship and met up for closure on how things went in 2019. I gave him a second chance and met up hoping to get some answers. We walked through densely populated areas of town where we got stopped multiple times by his fans. In hindsight, this felt very intentional, almost as if it was to flaunt his influence and desirability to me. We went to a bar to talk and he then proceeded to get me very drunk. He got us an Uber back to his house. I ended up blacking out in his bed due to the alcohol, but the last thing I remembered was him unconsensually removing my clothes. The next morning, he proceeded to tell me that I must be a lesbian because I wasn't interested in him. These past years have been extremely difficult to navigate because of this. I couldn't go online without seeing him everywhere and being adored as a soft boy who heroically respects women and mental health issues. I couldn't even go to conventions and enjoy my own hobbies without seeing people dressed up as him. Shelby was right. Staying quiet wasn't bringing me any peace, it was only keeping his. Now in the comments of this post she'd link her channel and her Patreon, and the moment she did this, people's opinions on the allegations changed. Tweets like, going to be honest, plugging your social media after coming out against a YouTuber that is already having their career destroyed is a very strange look, started to be more frequent, and people believed that she was only coming out with these allegations for clout. But there were also the other half that believed that she was just asking people to support her and her channel. Now, how do you feel about Alice putting her YouTube channel and her Patreon page in the thread of these serious allegations? Let me know in the comments below. But again, even with more allegations coming out about Wilbur Soot, he still hasn't replied to Shelby, and it doesn't seem like he will be responding to Alice as well. Wilbur has went quiet on all of his social medias. On his Instagram page, all of the comments on his newest posts were just people making fun of the allegations that came out against him. And this was the same for his YouTube channel, just more people speaking about the allegations in the comments of his newest video. On Twitch, he has been silent as well, but it's good to note that he hasn't posted a YouTube video in quite some time, and this was also the same for going live on Twitch as well. To be completely honest, this could be the biggest controversy of 2024. Not only did this start a new wave of allegations against other creators within the Minecraft community, but the situation as a whole was handled terribly. And it seems like Wilbur is just waiting it out until the dust settles to make his return to posting on social media or going on tour with his band and releasing new music. It's been silent, and I'm not sure if we will ever get Wilbur's side of the story with evidence because I believe that if he truly had the evidence from the text messages, then he would have just shown them. But again, that's just my opinion and how I'd deal with the situation if I ever, which I wouldn't, find myself in. Wilbur's apology showed a self-centered side of this person who, to be honest, no one truly knew. This is the issue with looking up to bigger content creators on YouTube, and another big reason why Minecraft YouTubers get called out so often. They portray a person that they truly aren't. This person can be friendly and abide by all the politically correct norms of the world, but behind closed doors and with the cameras off, a lot of the times, these creators don't actually believe in what they're saying and can be completely different than what we may think they are on camera. For example, just look at the mini lad situation. I personally always found him funny and nice, but behind the scenes, he was a terrible person who abused his influence in order to get what he wanted from these young fans that looked up to him. Now, it took me a week longer to have this video out because I wanted to see if Wilbur would ever respond or show evidence against Shelby or Alice. But at this point in time, on the 15th of March, he still hasn't come out with new evidence. But if he does in the future, I more so would cover the story on my second channel opposed to this channel. But that's all up in the air so far. But have you ever heard of Wilbur Sutt? And have you seen these new allegations that came to light these past couple of weeks? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, 
and subscribe to the channel to help us get that much closer to hitting 200,000 subscribers. If you have any YouTubers or TikTokers or content creators you want me to check out, the best way you can suggest them to me is by sending me a DM on Instagram or on my Discord. Both will be linked in the comments below. But this has been the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Throughout the past few months, we have covered a lot of different communities who harbor pretty terrible creators. We looked at the Minecraft community who had Gen Pop and Lion Maker, and we also looked at the YouTube community with Austin Jones and EDP445. But one platform that we haven't checked out, which is pretty weird seeing that they have a lot of creepy creators, is TikTok. TikTok harbors a lot of horrible creators.